Hi, I'm Misha here, and this is going to be the first part in a two-part, and this will be probably quite a bit shorter than the second one. But I wanted to address a topic that I see brought up in forums and just kind of people speculating about military engagements, and that is bolt action styles, specifically <clears throat> turn bolt. versus straight pull. <clears throat> now stop it. Both hold open followers. Now early on you saw more straight pulls. But as time kind of progressed, it more and more countries, militaries, manufacturers, inventors only did the turn bolt and people speculate why why did they go away from the straight pull so i wanted to talk about the pros and cons to each and why essentially turn bolt was the version the general pattern that was chosen so to that end brought out swiss k31 often called a schmidt rubin although it's not this is kind of the the ultimate version of the swiss straight pull and switzerland was pretty much the most dedicated user of straight pulls this is in 7.5 GP11 for what it's worth. And <clears throat> the British Lee Enfield. This is a number four Mark I. This is the World War II version, pretty much considered the final major variant in the UK for the Enfield and often considered one of the best. So these guns are contemporary of each other. Both were made in the 1940s. And this is chambered for 303 British. And both guns, although their actions have been modified to greater or lesser extents, the actions do date back to the late 19th century. So this seems like a good fair comparison. So, let's talk about, I'm going to take the mags out of each of these for fairness' sake. Of course, the main thing people view is speed. This would be better if we could do a live firing exercise, but make do. So you're just straight forward, straight back, plus using the trigger. Whereas on a turn bolt, you have You have more motions. Now to be fair, the infield is known for being one of the best bolt turn actions. That's because it has the lugs in the back and it has a shorter, less of an arc travel to its bolt. It's also one that's, you know, mythically credited with being fired so fast in World War I that Germans mistook British troops for machine gunners, which is, you know, complete bunkus. But, you know, it's a fun story still. Get that out of the way. Now, Switzerland first used straight pulls with the original 1889 Schmidt Rubin, followed by the 1911, and then finally the K31. They were enamored with it. And certainly, the system was very positive for them. But, it does have drawbacks. Yes, the action requires less hand motion. But as you see, the bolt has to be pulled back further on this one. Also, it's empty right now, so pulling it back is quite easy. However, when you have a spent casing in there that's expanded to the chamber, you pulling that back is your primary extraction. So sometimes you have to yank on a straight pull quite a bit to get that primary extraction slowing you down. Also, of course, there's a danger 
of the rim breaking off the cartridge or your extractor breaking. And that's one of the biggest failings of straight pulls. They're known for weak primary extraction. And, it, and more work has to be done by the individual. Whereas on a turn bolt design, the way the extractor works with the case, that initial unlock and opening gives them a mechanical advantage towards grabbing the rim and pulling it out of the chamber the first initial nth of a millimeter, thus loosening it. So it's a smoother, less physically demanding motion, especially when you have a semi-stuck case. So while there are more physical motions to a turn bolt, they require less force. Also, you just get that better primary extraction. There are also cost analysis reasons, but really that's kind of not the point because where the Swiss guns are pretty expensive to make, there are cheaper ways to make turn bolts, like yeah, straight pull bolts, such as the Steyr Manlicker. But that said, I think a turn bolt can still be made even cheaper and faster. So you do get a cost and manufacturing speed advantage. You also get an advantage with a turn bolt of dependability. They seem to be, well, guns like this, straight pulls, seem to be a little more susceptible to mud and grime getting in the action and, uh, you know, failing because of that. That's why a Swiss K31 works great in a nation like Switzerland where an army can maintain it, but probably would not have done so well on the Eastern Front between Russia and Germany in World War II. For that environment, something like the Mosin was definitely more preferred. So yeah, I think that that's a lot of reason. Of course, militaries do get ensconced in tradition, and by the time you get to World War II, most militaries are using some kind of derivative of the Mauser action, which was a turn bolt, because it really was a, an awesome system. You know, the, the definitely there were plenty of others, Carcanos, Arasakas, of course, of course. But I think because someone like Mauser came along and really refined his chosen system, it gave it a lot more credence. And of course, so many were made, so there's a certain value in just numbers. Therefore, more people are familiar with it. And that's when you start to see more and more sporting hunting guns with uh, turn bolts versus straight pull. Just food for thought. I'm sure I've missed some points or overlooked. So feel free to give your own thoughts in the comments below. This could be a really fun discussion, I think. If you could, like, share, and subscribe. And also click on the link and check out our Patreon page. And uh, stay tuned for part two. This is Misha, and we'll catch you very soon next time.